Hello and welcome back to Before Our Friends Die. You're joined by me, Kavan, and this is, of course, the Akin Selfish Digital Network. Last week, we had an amazing conversation with Dr. Katie Adesico about grief. Now, if grief is something that makes you raise your eyebrows, make sure you go back and check out the episode because there's some top tips in there about what you can do to navigate that crazy phenomenon we all feel a little bit awkward about. But this is part two, and you know what part two entails. It's seven signature questions where we get to know our guests about a little bit more. Now, having spoken to Katie about grief, I'm not sure how much more we can get to know her, but we'll give it a shot with these seven signature questions. So, without further ado, Katie, who is the richest person in your phone book? The richest person? Uh, who has the most money? the co-founder. <laughs> I think probably the co-founder of who I'm speaking to at the moment. Don't want to put them on the spot, but... <laughs> so, but I think... so with, with that in mind, what, what, what do they do? What do they uh, sort of engage with? Uh, they are a chief wellbeing officer and they're the co-founder of a really amazing company that supports wellbeing and mental health organisations. Nice, that's amazing. And do you know what? The aim of that question... Is I think we've had like I don't know forty five fifty guests on on the show on the in network right now, and like there's so many different pe- things people can do, and like I w- I've never heard of a chief wellbeing officer before today, and I'm sure our listeners will again be exposed to that new element of their life. We've heard of people who invest in you know random things and people who are board members, and there's so many different things you can do with your life. And the aim of that question is just to unearth them and see you know where our uh-huh. networks are. So thank you for that. That's really interesting. Um, okay, number two. Who has the most potential that you know? Uh, my husband. Do you want to elaborate? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think he just has a lot of wonderful skills, such as, you know, the calmness. He's quite wise. Uh, he's very loyal. He's very honest. He's hardworking. And I think... Um, I just wish sometimes he would see himself the way I see him because, um, yeah, he, I mean, he's, he's put a lot of things in, into into life and made made it happen, which is incredible. So he's incredibly successful because of all of his different characteristics. But I guess he, to me, he's got so much more potential. And I think sometimes if we are more connected to ourselves and our own self-belief and everything, we um, don't realise actually that you know how much potential we have so I, I wish sometimes people could see each other from the other person's eyes that not is what incredible. we think they think of us <laughs> yeah that is incredible and you know what i actually had a, um, a husband and wife on once um way back in the archives see if you can find it if you're listening and um i asked the wife you know who has the most potential that you know and she said her husband and she, you know she, she really explained and it was amazing and then when i asked him <laughs> he said the dog <laughs> oh no <laughs> There goes the potential. There goes the potential. Uh, Never mind. Um, You know, they're happily married and all that. So, yeah, shout out the dog. Um, Who is the most influential person you know, Katie? The most influential person I know. Like, personally, no. That's, you know, people always ask that. So, I said an author. I said James Clear from Atomic Habits. Oh, okay, Um, yeah. But it could be anyone. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely not. I think I think the per- person I thought about was Brenna Brown. I feel like academically she's an inspiration to me. Like I love her stuff, her research, uh, her books. I think she's incredible. And uh, but yeah, so I guess that that's just more on a famous level, celebrity. Um, and uh, yeah, personal level. Oh my goodness. I I think my children it sounds so cheesy, but I just think children are the manifestation of everything we long for as adults. Mm. You know, they're free. They're in the moment. They love unconditionally. They live like, all of those things. So they are so non-judgmental, and it's just beautiful. They're so pure, and I just yeah, I think they're inspirational. <laughs> when you put it like that, it just made me reflect on the journey that we go through to become adults and how you you lose those those parts mm-hmm. of your identity. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, Sad, isn't it? <laughs> very much so. Yeah. Um, so you're at your best when you are fill in the blank. Uh, when I had enough sleep. <laughs> Actually, no. Do you know what? Considering I've not had enough sleep in the last seven years because of my <laughs> children, I've, I've and I've been pretty much at my best up and down a lot in the last seven years. So no, that's that's probably not the right answer. Um, I'm at my best when I guess I'm not so self-judgmental, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm 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 kind of I feel more content. Uh, then I just feel like I'm at my best when I do the things that I love and I know that 
day, like inspiring, have an impact. I love those things. That's when I'm at my best, I think. Brilliant. And I think that will resonate with a lot of listeners as well. <laughs> one thing you never regret doing. Now, this can be one moment that you're never going to regret. or It could be something that you do regularly that you never regret once you've done it. Uh, going swimming. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? What does swimming make you feel? Oh, I just, I just, even sometimes when it's hard to kind of get out of bed because I have to do it before everybody wakes up. Um, so sometimes it takes a lot of self-discipline, but I just, once I'm in the water, I just, I love it. I love being in the water. So I, it's, I think it's my meditative state. I just feel connected to, to something else. And it's just, um, and actually, do you know what? Lego, I've never realized when, <laughs> when I do Lego with my children, it just allows me to like switch off. It's so strange. And I find it really difficult to switch off actually. So meditation and things like that, that I know are really good for you. I actually find that quite difficult, but, um, I, I have to say, I forgot your answer, your question now, but was it when I, one thing you never regret? Oh, I never regret. Sorry. Oh God. Yeah. Completely uh, went off then. That's fine. Um, I guess, yeah, I don't regret having children <laughs> as much as they can be in the pain in the arse and change your life. That was the absolute most wonderful thing that can happen to you. And it's like the most important thing um, in my life, like being a parent to them and having them is just, yeah, I never regret that. So with all the highs and lows, I don't regret that. <laughs> Love that answer. Because, you know, swimming is one of those, I'm not a great swimmer. So when, whenever I'm in the water, it is literally life and death. Whatever else has happened in my day or my week, I, I cannot think about it. I don't have space in my brain to think about it because it's about surviving. And actually, that is a real great opportunity to switch off because yeah. all I have to do is get out of this water safely. <laughs> yeah. The fact that I had a good or bad day at work matters nothing. So, you know, it's, yeah, I, I like swimming as well, perhaps for different reasons. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself in five years, Katie? Ooh, um... Goodness, I should have an answer for this, really. Uh, I see myself, I'm not sure where in the world I am. I'm not sure if I'll be here or not, or what, but I think I see myself still indulging and loving life with my family, hopefully, and just spreading more, I don't know, more, more wisdom, knowledge that I've acquired over the five years to come, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I guess internally I see myself more content, I guess, and balanced out. And, and a lot of things that help you live a more fulfilling and thriving life. I just hope we don't always have to wait until we are in our 70s or 80s mm. to be like that. Like, I almost feel like I, I'm I'm already working on it. I'm in the process. So I, I guess in, in five years time, I see myself closer to all of those things. So that's really, really, really interesting. That, oh. Your answer was fascinating as well, because... I, I'm, I'm sure someone who's who's listened to the episodes uh, more frequently can can challenge me on this, but I think you're the first person to reference the idea of accumulation of knowledge over the next five years. Some people have said, you know, in the next five years, I just want to be here. Uh, and they've almost uh, assumed that they're going to have the same knowledge that they have today in five years. Whereas you've said, over the next five years, I'm going to accumulate more and share more because I've accumulated more. And that is a really interesting perspective. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where I think, what's the retirement age now, 67? That just doesn't ring true to me. It just, it, I just can't possibly see myself working until I'm 67 because I need to work. If I'm ever working at 67, it's because I want to. So, yeah. you know, I need to find a way out of, of um, so that I can retire in probably the next 20 years. And then everything, yeah. else, everything else after that is a bonus. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it all pans out. And um, if you want to help me retire in the next 20 years, please do like, share, comment, subscribe, all those great things. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, final question where we get to know you, Katie, is advice you now would give to yourself 10 years ago? What's the advice I would give myself now, 10 years ago? So the advice you now, so the person that's sitting in that chair right now, what advice would you give yourself from 10 years ago? Oh, I'm so cheesy, but I don't care. I'm just going to say it. Uh, it. The honest answer, the honest answer is that it's all going to be okay. And just to trust yourself, love yourself, trust yourself. And it's going to be okay. Like all the things you think matter a lot and they just won't matter that much. So yeah, I guess I just would tell myself like, just, just keep on going, growing, living, loving, all of those things. You know, you say it's cheesy, 
But I would say 60 to 80% of our answers have been along that vein. You know, don't worry about it. Nothing you ever thought was that serious is that serious. Keep going, keep rolling with it. We've had the odd person who has said, invest in Bitcoin. Make no mistake, invest <laughs> in Bitcoin. Yeah, you know, actually, <laughs> yeah. yeah, which I think I think is very clever. That's that's important. If I if I could go back 10 years, um, I'd convince Absolutely. an adult around me to, to invest in Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what can you do? I, I, love, I love the idea that actually on reflection, 10 years ago, it's not that serious. Just roll with it, keep going and you'll do yourself proud. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. There's our seven signature questions. Oh, they're really, really great questions. <laughs> and, um, I would love to know them from you, but maybe we have to do that offline. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll, t- I'll touch base with you offline. Although actually, I think I'm at my best when I'm balanced is probably the, the only one that um, isn't what I've already reflected on. Yes, yeah, so when, when I'm balanced, that is when I'm at my absolute best. And annoyingly it often takes being unbalanced for me to recognize that oh okay i've just fallen out of balance you know, i can't tend to spot it as it's happening i need to reflect back and get creative with my um, my outputs and, and journal when i look back on my journal i say oh that was a really good time because i was doing x y and z so now i need to yeah. re-implement those things and, and, and get back that balance yeah absolutely but th- but do you know what i think that's beautiful and that's so powerful because that actually shows that if you didn't have that reflection and if you didn't feel unbalanced you wouldn't even feel balanced does that make sense Mm -hmm. so like you wouldn't know what the feeling of balance is same way that we wouldn't know what the feeling of happiness or good or bad we wouldn't know that without the opposite so I think it's very good and I think you're just doing exactly the best thing human beings can do in terms of emotion regulation or coping mechanisms that you're just doing you're literally thinking back and thinking, oh, God, what, what did I do then mm. that made me feel so good or so balanced? So I need to do more of that. But if you didn't feel that, you wouldn't even have that trigger to reflect. So it is really good what you do. And the more you do it, you're going to reinforce a positive cycle and yep. keep on doing a different. And it's really weird because, you know, we're so comfortable when it's good and so uncomfortable when it's bad. But we couldn't be as comfortable with the good if we weren't as uncomfortable with the bad. It's such a weird, yeah. you know, pa- uh, <laughs> paradox. It's like, come on. Can't we just, anyway, can't we just find it easy? I don't know. I don't know. But the, the, someone said once, when I, I watched a training video and someone asked a guy what he was training for and he trains like a, a madman. And he said, English isn't his first language. And he says, I train for the difficult. And that's it. We train for the difficult. You know, when things get difficult, yeah. that's what we're training for. And I guess all those good days, all those reflections, all those self-care mechanisms you, you employ are all for the difficult. So when it does eventually happen, which it will, you're ready, you're prepared, you're resilient. 100 percent, because we are we are wired to survive right but like i, like I was saying in the episode as well like last week like you we now we don't live to just survive we want to thrive we want to live a fulfilling life so to do that you need to reflect and be more in tune with yourselves and it, it's just it's human nature up and down emotions come and go things happen life happens like so many things are uncontrollable but i guess just yeah knowing deep down that the things that you can control uh, you, you focus on those things right like if anybody told you there's going to be a pandemic you would have been like no way how yeah. are we going to survive that like, yeah. but we do we do we're resilient we do we overcome we grow and again without wanting to sound too cheesy i just think that's the point of life what's the point of life if there's not and it's not about learning and growing and then you know living and thriving so it's all part of that there we have it that has been before our friends die on the Acting Saltfish Digital Network, and you've been joined by me, Kavan, and Dr. Katie Adesico. This is, of course, the Acting Saltfish Digital Network. And if you didn't know, Katie is the founder of Positive Psychology for Life. Now, listen to part one, listen to part two, and that will be your reason why you need to check out Positive Psychology for Life. I'll put their details below in the description and it will change your life, no doubt about it. Take care. If you've got any questions for me, please email akiandsaltfish at gmail.com. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all those great things. It really helps us grow. And finally, uh, if you're feeling like you've got some questions about grief, go back to part one, listen to it and answer all those questions. Thank you, take care, and goodbye. Boom.